Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, The Lineup. Ladies and gentlemen, in just a moment we will take you by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city, for under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. Yes, for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, it's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, delicious flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and gives you a nice little lift. The good, smooth chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert, adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. So for chewing enjoyment plus refreshment, Treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Same as usual, about 28. No, I'll see you later. Yeah. Ms. Martin? Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Uh, this isn't too close for you, is it? No. Matter of fact, I'm a little nearsighted. Uh, Mr. Martin didn't come with you, huh? He never worked tonight. I see. Well, I don't know if we have anybody even close to the man who robbed your apartment, but I want you to have a look, and if there's anything at all familiar about any of the suspects, don't hesitate to speak to them. I'll do what I can. What is it the paper's calling? The Phantom Burger? Yeah, I think that's it. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name, and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him held. Questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers, as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. Okay, keep it moving. Right over here to the end of the stage. I'm trying to face front. Hands at your sides. Look straight ahead out through the screen. Okay, number one, Charles Bendix robbery. Step out, Charles. Okay. Hands out of your pockets. Okay. Where do you live, Charles? Some 64 West 65th Street. At a house, hotel, or what? A house. What's your business? Well, you mean no. You have a trade? Well, you mean no. Okay, what no, do you do now? Here. It's too tall. Mm -hmm. What did you do? I was a mechanic. Where'd you work when you were a mechanic? I worked lots of places. Garages, gas stations. Name some of the places. Well, last place about a year ago. was Murphy's Garage. Where's that? On Adams. Were you with anybody when you were arrested, Charles? No. You have a car? Yeah, I have a car. Describe it. Year, make, model, color? Sports, sedan, black 48. You want a license number? No. You have any weapons? No, not one. How about the gun we found in the back? That wasn't mine. Well, how'd it get there? I don't know. I didn't put it there. I never saw it before. Okay, Charles, step back. Number two, John Miller, drunk and disorderly. You always wear glasses, John? Yeah, you always. Take them off. Lights are awful bright. I wear these things so I don't have to look at nothing bright. Take them off, John. Okay. What? Keep your head up. Well, i got to keep my eyes closed, then. The lights are too bright. Keep them closed if you have to, but keep your head up so the people out there can take a good look at you. Okay. Where do you live, John? Down by River Street. What's the address? All right, no, I keep moving. And you're not working? No. Did you ever work, John? Oh, sure, I worked. I, I used to work quite a bit. That was a little while back, so. Maybe if you stayed sober. Oh, I tried that. I, I can't make it. That's tougher than work. When was the last time you had a job? Last time? Uh, well, 
Some time ago, maybe four or five years. What kind of a job was it? I was with the railroad. I, I get a pension. From the railroad? Yeah, from the railroad. Quite a few complaints against you, John. Yeah, I guess so. I, I, I got out of line. I, I made a few people sore. I, I didn't mean to. The stuff I got into me made me real mean. What stuff? I don't know. A friend of mine said it was good. But I should have stuck to the great stuff, but I took his word for it. I'm real sorry, I did. That's certainly not uh, man. You can put okay. your glasses on, John. Me on through? Yeah, step back. Uh, okay, number three. Mario Gomez, robbery. Come on, Mario, step up. Okay. Where do you live, Mario? The Lincoln Hotel on the east side. What do you I do, don't Mario? see anybody up there. It looks like the right. man. Oh, well, there's a lot more to look at. How many? Oh, quite a few. Might take a little while. All right. Have any weapons on you when you were picked up? Yeah. Describe the weapons, Mario. Just one. Gun. Forty-five. Automatic, revolver, what? Yeah, a little. Oh. No identification from Mrs. Martin, huh? No. She looked at the whole bunch. Well, we better get this guy. He's got the whole section on the north side locking their doors at 6 o'clock. Every time a housewife hears a stray cat, we get a call. I know. Four robberies in four weeks. All with the same M.O. I've got the whole neighborhood staked out. Five cars and a half a dozen men on the streets. Funny how a guy will stick to one neighborhood like that. A pretty wealthy neighborhood. Yeah, but he's certainly no dummy. Professional all the way. You think a guy like that would keep moving? The more he works that area, the more chance he takes of getting picked up. You think he'd figure on that? Mm, that's why we've got MO files. A lot of guys work like that. Get a good psychologist to tell you about it. <laughs> he scared the wits out of the Martin woman, didn't he? Yeah. That's the first slip he's made. Probably thought she was out. He's never gone into a place with anybody in it before. Maybe he's just getting brave. I don't think so. When she screamed, he ran. He had a gun, huh? Well, according to Mrs. Martin. But you know how people get when something like that happens. Burglar sneaks in and surprises them, and they tell you later he was carrying a machine gun. If there were two witnesses, chances are they both have different stories. Here it is, Ben. You know what? Our boy just robbed another house in the same area. Get here. Well, a couple of minutes. The woman who owns the house came home about 15 minutes ago, put in the call. Talk to him? Yeah. Got a little history. Crockett's around back. Guy got in through the bedroom window. You get much? Hmm, quite a bit, according to the woman. Named Strickland. Her husband's out of town. Boy, I don't know how he did it. We got this neighborhood covered like a blanket. Well, this guy's smart. He's proved it five times now. Yes? Oh, come in. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Strickland, this is Lieutenant Guthrie and Sergeant Carter. How do you do? How do you do, Miss How do you do? Well, this is certainly something new in my life. I've never been robbed before. I was frightened for the moment when I saw the house was such a mess and that things were missing. Oh, won't you sit down? No, thank you. Did he take much, Mrs. Strickland? Well, quite a bit. I don't know for sure, but I'll be able to tell better after I make a complete check. I think I saw him. Saw him? Yes, the burglar. I think I saw him run around the house. You get a good look at him? Well, it happened so fast, it startled me. And the only thing I could think about were my antiques. We've had a number of burglaries in this neighborhood. Well, then you didn't see him very well. I don't think I could identify him if I saw him again. It happened too fast. And very frankly, I was too frightened. Crock it out back now, Dave. Yeah, Ben. You want him? No. Lab boy's coming over. Put in a call right away. Could I make you some coffee or something? Well, thank you, uh... I'm sorry, but we'll have to be here for a little while. This might take some time. Oh, that's quite all right. Anything I can do? Well, don't touch anything until we're done. We want to check for prints. Well, I'm afraid I've already... Well, that's all right, but uh, try to leave everything just as it is now, will you? All right. I'll go put a pot of coffee on. Well, thank you very much. Hmm. Nice. Yeah. Wish everybody was that cooperative. Well, let's go out and see if Crockett's turned up anything. Uh, Pete, call in and make a report, will you? All right.
Dick? Yeah, over here. Hi. Hi. Uh, find anything? I don't know. Not much, anyway. Mr. Strickland said he went over the fence. I went out in the alley. Come here. It's mostly gravel, but... Right along the fence here. See it? Hmm. Uh, a heel print. Uh-huh. Not a very good one, but it might be his. Hmm. You got the lab to make a cast. That's about all I've been able to turn up. Well, this guy's beginning to be a nuisance. Yeah, and we're beginning to look a little silly. Whole area staked out, and he pulls one off right under our noses. Maybe he likes it that way. Maybe he hates cops. Well, one thing's for sure. He's not making himself any friends. Come on. the duty at three. Coin and Asher. You know, they should put in more street lights around here. Yeah. Funny if he moved to another neighborhood. Phantom burglar strikes while the police are looking for him ten miles away. Swell. It's been three days. Maybe he's had enough. Maybe he moved up. Hey, wait a minute. The guy over there. Well, let's check him. Hey. Me? Yeah, come here. You live around here? Yes, right down the block. What's the address? 205 East Maple. You any identification on you? My driver's license. May I see it, please? <laughs> John Milford? That's correct. Mm. How old are you, Mr. Milford? I'm 38. July 19th, 1914. I've never been stopped like this before. It's pretty late to be taking a walk. I guess it is, but I've been working late. I'm a riser. Ah. Uh, there you are, Mr. Milford. We're just checking. All those burglars? Yeah. How long have you lived in the neighborhood, Mr. Milford? Oh, about seven years. Okay, thanks. Sorry to bother you. Sorry. Right. Looks like a writer. How can you tell? Well, I don't know. He just does. The way he dresses, you know. No, I don't know. But if you do, start concentrating on burglars. I'll give a month's pay if you could pick out the boy we want. Oh, it's nearly three. Why am I going to sleep? Yeah. We got the four to eight tomorrow. Now, hold it a minute. What? Right. Stop the car. What is it? Back it up. I thought I saw something in that alley. See anything? Oh, wait till I throw the light down. Well, it's clear to me. I could have sw- Hey, there. Hey, you! Stop! Hey! Pete? Go get him. How bad is it? I'm all right. Go get him. Yeah. you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint Gum. Chew Wrigley Spearmint while you're working. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley Spearmint gives you a refreshing little lift. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley Spearmint Gum helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied. Makes your job seem easier. Chew Wrigley Spearmint Gum in your home, when you're out walking or driving, when you're enjoying outdoor sports and other activities. Wrigley Spearmint Gum tastes good anytime. And the natural chewing aids digestion and helps keep your teeth bright and attractive. Yes, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, you'll enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Now, back to the lineup.
Dr. Gorson, report to second floor desk. Dr. Gorson, second floor desk, please. Why don't you let me go down to the kitchen and get me some coffee, Lieutenant? No, thanks, Steve. You're wearing out the floor. Yeah. How long you had this duty, Steve? Huh? Oh, I guess about four years now. Oh, excuse me. Emergency officer Shelton. I haven't heard anything yet. Lieutenant Guthrie's here. Yeah, hold it. It's for you, Lieutenant. Oh, thanks. Sergeant Quine. All right. Hello, Quine. All the others, huh? Uh... He's been in surgery for nearly an hour now. How bad it'll feel? I don't know. Did you get a lab report on that heel print yet? Uh-huh. Got a good cast. We're checking. Got the whole area covered good. Feet must have hit him. We found some blood at the end of the alley. I wish I'd gotten a better look at him. One thing's sure. He can run. I don't think he's very old. Well, I'll keep in touch. I'll let you know as soon as I hear something. Right, right. I see. Are you sure you would like some coffee or some tea or something, Lieutenant? Oh, thanks. You like tea? Oh, not much. I, I never drink it much. Sometimes iced tea when it's real hot, you know. Iced tea's good on picnic. Yeah, yeah I guess it is. Yeah, but so's beer. I think I like beer better. Except on picnics, I usually bring the kids and the wife makes iced tea. Hey, what, what, what time is it? It's uh, ten minutes later than the last time you asked. You'll be okay, Lieutenant. Gunshot takes a long time. Yeah, it sure does. Oh, here comes the doc. Hello, Ben. Hi. Mm, looks like he ought to be in bed. He's walked 20 miles. How's a patient? Mm-hmm. He'll be all right. Uh, who's got a cigarette? Here. It's a bad room. He'll be there for a while. But... You got a match? Yeah. Right. Thanks. He's lost some blood. I don't think it'd be wise to see him until tomorrow. But he'll be all right. You got the one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty flattened out. Uh, I'm not going to tell much for that. Um, it'll be okay, though, huh? Sure. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for the cigarettes. I'll see him in the morning. So long. Uh, he's a good doctor. Yeah. Well, I'll see you, Steve. You're going to get some sleep? I'm going to get the guy who shot Pete. Then I'll get some sleep. I just got back from there. Oh, poor guy. Feels rotten. How long is he in for? At least a month. Actually, he's pretty lucky, though. Yeah. Well, we've come up with exactly nothing. Still checking the heel print, so it doesn't look good. Strickland woman reported losing about 5000 in clothes and jewelry. Mm. Went over the area good, but didn't turn up a thing. This guy's really smart. He's clever. And when he used that gun, he stopped being smart. Good morning. morning, Asher. He's okay, huh? Yeah, I saw him a few minutes ago. He's going to be all right. Why don't we get up a collection and buy him a pretty nurse or something? You got a lab report? Yeah. Can't tell a thing from that slug. Too flattened out. Okay. This is the way we set it up. We're pretty sure our boys hurt. There was blood in the back of the alley. I want every small hospital, emergency station, drugstore, any place that he might go to get aid checked, particularly in that area. Well, Ben, that's a lot of territory. If he's hurt bad enough, he's going to go for help. I don't care how long it takes or how much territory we've got to cover, but I want to check... He's smart enough to know a doctor would turn in gunshot wound report and maybe detain him. So he might try to take care of it himself. How about some of the men we got on file that are out of practice? Right. I want every questionable doctor we've got a record on checked. I don't think he'll try any more jobs, even if he isn't hurt badly. But we know he hasn't tried to unload any of his takes, so he just might try to do it now. Get some money and skip. Well, we've got all those sources covered and distributed circulars to every hot shop in the city. Well, that's what I want. Hospitals, drugstores, pharmacies, pawn shops, all our potential connections checked and double-checked. I want this guy. I really want him. Guthrie. Ben, think we got something. What? Uh, Dr. Brennan over on Temple called in about a man he just treated for a gunshot wound. Right. I'll meet you down there in the garage. Let's go, boys. Drive up. Come in. Dr. Brennan? That's right. I'm Guthrie. This is Sergeant Quine. I tried to get him to stay. I 
Called you as soon as he left. And what did he look like? Well, he was about my size. Maybe a few inches taller, but not much more. He was dark, and mm, I'd say about 30 or a little less. Wasn't an old man. I guess he weighed around, oh, about as much as I do. Maybe 150 or 55. Uh, what was he wearing? A dark suit, an old one. Funny thing, too, he had on tennis shoes. You know, the low ones. First thing I noticed about his clothes, wearing a suit with white tennis shoes. Now, how bad was he hurt? Well, the wound wasn't too serious. He'd lost some blood. Bullet went through the arm, about eight inches up from the wrist. Missed the bone. He said he'd been cleaning his gun. I told him I'd have to make out a report, and he didn't seem to mind. He gave me his name and address and started to leave. That's when I thought something was wrong. I asked him to stay until I phoned in the report, and he got kind of nasty, so I didn't press it. He looked like he could have... Well, he kind of scared me, so I let him go and called you. When you've done fine, Doctor. I gave him a prescription. A prescription? Yes. I told him to come back tomorrow to have the arm treated, but he said he'd be out of the city, so I gave him a prescription. What was it for? Oh, you're my son, Hartman. Yeah, that could do it. How long ago did you leave? Hmm? About 20 minutes, I think. Well, now, look, there's only one all-night pharmacy open this early, isn't there? Yes, Dirksen's. Eight o'clock would probably be the earliest on the rest. Maybe there's some open earlier, but I wouldn't know. Well, thank you, Doctor. We'd uh, like you to look at our mug pile, if you don't mind. All right. Uh, what address did he give you? Hmm. I wrote it down. All right. John Smith, 9967 South Selby. That's probably fine. Uh, well, we'll check on it anyway. If he has that prescription filled, we'll get him. Well, he isn't any of these. Well, here's another batch, Doctor. <laughs> Brian flourishes in our fair city. Hmm? I hate to admit it, but you're right. The man you're looking for shot a policeman. Let's hope I find him. How's it coming? Uh, nothing yet. Oh, just a slight case of astigmatism. <laughs> well, if he fills that prescription, we'll nail him. I put out an APB and every precinct in the city is cooperating. Mm, and what about the address? Yeah, phony like the figure. The building there, all right, but it's a gas station. How are they covering the drugstores and pharmacy? Circulars, and most of them will be staked out. Anyone filling a prescription for oreomycin ointment will be immediately held. Here. What? This is the man. Oh, Richard Davis. Alias Richard Davy. Anyone know him? No, last time arrested, 1936, petty theft. Hmm, he's graduated. He's the man. He looks older now, but that's the man. Did six months and a day, three previous arrests. No, all minor. Get out an APB. I'll get it. You've been a big help, Doctor. I'm well, glad to do it. Yes, I could use some breakfast. Well, come on. We'll go downstairs and I may have a bite to eat with you. Okay. Well, ben. Yeah? Report from Color Drugstore on Adams. Davy? I don't know, but the man's got his left arm in a sling. It was his left arm. And he just asked to have a prescription filled for oreomycin ointment. the day manager. Is there something I can do for you? You, Mr. Simpson? Yes. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. Oh, 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 the man left. How long ago? Well, not more than three or four minutes, sir, just before you came in. Did you see which way he went? No, no, but he'll be back. Well, how do you know that? Well, he has to pick up his prescription, the oreomycin. I told the prescriptionist to tell him it'd be about 20 minutes, and he said he'd be back. I got the circular this morning when we opened, and the minute he ordered the prescription, I called you. His arm was in a sling. Well, look, tell me, uh, does he, uh... Does he look like this picture? Um, yes. Yes, that's the man. Yeah. What's he doing? Now, look, uh, if he comes back... Oh, he will. I purposely told him it'd be 20 minutes. So so I'd have time to call you, and you'd have time to get him. All right, then. When he comes back, we'll take him as quietly as possible. Ben? He's not here. Oh, no. Yeah, but he should be back to pick up his prescription. This is Mr. Simpson, the day manager. Uh, how do you do, sir? Uh, this sergeant's fine. He'll be with me. Uh, won't be any shooting, is there? I don't think so, Mr. Simpson. Just go about your business and don't mention this to any of the other employees. All right. Now, uh, take me over and introduce me to your prescriptionist. It's over 20 minutes, Ben. Yeah. Think you got scared? Yeah, no telling. 
That manager might have tripped it. He's not very convincing. No. Well, if he comes in, he won't get out. The building's covered all the way around. I hope he gets in. Well, I just cannot understand it. Now, what, Mr. Simpson? He said he'd be back in 20 minutes. Were, uh, were you nervous at all? Uh, nervous? Did you do anything that might have frightened him? Oh, no. The prescriptions came over to me and told me that the man ordered the prescription. And I called you immediately. I told the prescriptionist to tell him that the prescription wouldn't be ready for 20 minutes. That's all? Why, absolutely. You didn't talk to the man yourself? Oh, no, certainly not. Why, he would have been suspicious. Well, we'll just keep waiting. Been in here for over an hour. Now, why don't you go get some coffee? You can watch the door. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. This could go on all day. Go ahead. Wait a minute. Huh? Just came in. Yeah, he's coming this way. Yeah, that's Davis, all right. The way he's carrying that arm in the sling, he could have a gun in it. How do we do it? Walk up and take him. He starts swinging that arm, stop him. Stand right where you are, Davis. What's going on? We're the police. Well, what do you want? Let's have a look at that swing. Don't move it. Don't move a muscle. I don't want to scare the people in the store. What is this? All right. Now, turn around and walk with us out of the store. Don't make any trouble. Oh, wait a minute. I want to know what this is all about. You're under arrest. Now, turn around and start walking. Under arrest for what? Grand theft and attempted murder. Oh, you're crazy. All right, hold it. Well, look, I'm going to be late for work. I work in an office. Stand I still. Can't... 38. You always carry your gun to work? Yeah, I won't get any trouble. I start walking. Cars down the street. Uh, I, I got a prescription back in there. You pay for it? Yeah. That's too bad. Remember, friends... Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum refreshes you. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum gives you real chewing enjoyment. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, sweetens your breath. The smooth, pleasant chewing of Wrigley's Spearmint helps keep you feeling relaxed and satisfied, makes whatever you're doing more enjoyable. Yes, for refreshment plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself often to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Millions enjoy it daily. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The Lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie, with Jack Moyle as Sergeant Pete Carter, was written by Blake Edwards, with music by Eddie Dunsteader. Featured in tonight's cast were High Everback, Virginia Gregg, Bill Conrad, Stacey Harris, Harry Lang, Peter Lee, Gene Bates, John Stevenson, and Howard McNear. The lineup was transcribed in Hollywood by Jaime Del Valle. Next week at the same time, you'll hear J. Carol Nash once again starring as the lovable Luigi. Remember, Life with Luigi returns next week at this time over the CBS Radio Network.